Hey guys. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on? Hello, hello, hello. What's up? What's up? How are you? How was your day? Come on in. Hello, hello. Hello there. How are you? Come on in. Come on in. So I went live to talk about home buying expectations. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll just be on here for a little bit, but we'll talk about that for a little bit. Home buying expectations. Hello, hello. So any questions about home buying expectations? We'll talk about that for a little bit. How's your day been? How's everything going? I see a Tiffany joined in. Hi, Tiffany. Cool, cool, cool. See more people joining in. Hello, hello. So this live is going to be brief, um, but I do want to touch on home buying expectations a little bit. So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Hi, Milton and Josh. Hello, hello. So I'll get started in a little bit, trying to let more people join in. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section. This is my first time going live on TikTok, so no experience, but thank you guys for joining. Do we have any home buyers, future home buyers out there? Have any questions about what the buying experience is like? In particular questions for a realtor, you can put them in the comments. All right, so for home buying, I think a lot of people first think to reach out to a realtor, which is a great thing. Um, you definitely need, or in my bias, probably opinion, because I am a realtor, is I would recommend that you use a realtor, right? But before a realtor can really take you or should be taking you out to see properties, you really need to get pre-approved which means that your first step really is to speak to someone in lending unless you're going to use cash for your home buying experience. So speaking with the lender is really step number one. And if, you know, as most people do, reach out to realtors first. Um, what we'll do is say, hey, let's get you pre-approved and then let's come back and see, you know, what your must-haves are and look at the properties that you're interested in in the area that you want to live in. So getting pre-approved is really step number one. And that may mean multiple steps for you prior to that. So that may mean that you need to get some documents together. Um, but speaking to that lender, 
can help you determine which documents you need. Um, so a lot of people ask a lot of things about credit. So as a realtor, your credit is not something that I'm necess I am necessarily concerned about, but I know that it's something that would concern you based on your lending. So the reason why credit comes up is because when you're speaking with your lender and you want specific terms and you want specific you know, price ranges for your monthly payments, they're gonna look at your credit. So you need to look at your credit first. You need to know what's on there. You need to know if something's on there that doesn't need to be. If there's something that has been on there too long and it should be deleted off of your credit report. Things that, um, you know, you don't even know what they are. You can pretty much, you know, review your credit report and assess all those things and make sure that you know, your credit report represents you accurately. I have been able to talk to a lot of people after seeing my USDA single family home loan video. I've been able to talk to a lot of people um, through the consultations. So thank you guys for booking consultations with me. I will be opening the September calendar coming up soon. So mid August, expect that to be open. But yeah, really since that USDA video, kind of went viral. I haven't had any openings really for this month or next month. So because this month is wrapping up, um, I expect there'll be, you know, some adjustments and I will op sep open September soon. So thank you guys for your support. And also thank you guys for watching the videos and asking your questions and being interactive. I appreciate all the positive feedback, you know, so. Um, so with the home buying experience, like I was saying before, you first need to get pre-approved. You need to make sure that you know the price range that you're looking for. Because as a realtor, we can take you on properties, we can see properties, but it would be of no benefit to you if you're looking at properties that are outside of what you're going to be able to afford with a lender. So it just really doesn't make sense to do it that way. Um, and I like to make sure that my clients are informed. You need to know what's going on with your financial dealings. You need to have a good relationship with money. And that means that you need to, in my opinion, live within your means. That doesn't mean you have to live lower. If that's your choice, that's your choice. But you need to live within your means, what you can afford. So knowing what you can afford, what you can get, from the lender is very important before you go and look at homes. So you'll notice on my social media, I'm not posting a lot of homes necessarily. My job is not, my thought process is that I'm not here to really entice you into getting a particular type of home. I want you to get what's best for you. So that may not be the home that's really a million dollars, but I'll put it you know, on social media. That, that may not be the best thing. So, you know, nowadays homes can range to a million dollars in neighborhoods near you and you just may not have been aware that it really costs that much now. So um, I would rather provide resources and information and connect you with people because in real estate, when you buy a property, um, you're going to talk to different professionals. You're going to talk to a lender or a mortgage banker or a mortgage broker. You're going to talk to possibly an appraiser or an inspector. You may talk as an agent. Um, you may, you're you going to talk with an agent if you have one. That agent will talk to it, the other agent um, if there is another agent on the other side or the seller on the other side. Um, you may be talking to a builder. There's so many people that you need to talk to, you know. Um, so be ready when you decide to buy a home to have conversations. We can't text everything. We're gonna to have to talk to a lot of people. Um, and you want to talk to a lot of people because this decision is probably for most of us the biggest financial decision that you'll make. Um, and that doesn't mean that it's impossible, but that does mean that it takes some legwork, some communication, some understanding. There's a lot of paperwork at that closing table and you wanna understand what is going on before you get there. So you need to talk to a bunch of people. You need to make sure that you're clear on 
what you're expected to do and what the other parties are going to be doing, okay? So home buying is probably a big jump for a lot of people. And as a realtor, I am a homeowner, so I've been a homeowner prior to being a realtor, so I'm familiar with that journey. And of course, it's different for everybody. A lot of people will ask comments, um, ask questions in the comments related to more of the specifics. And this is the thing. When you're ready to buy a home, your lender is going to talk to you about your terms. They're not gonna to talk to you about general terms. At that point, they're gonna to talk to you about what is being offered to you. So when you ask someone in the comments or you know on social media, hey, what can I get for this credit score? Or what can I get for this or that? That's not gonna really be answered on social media. Um, that's something that someone looking at your credit report and having all the details of the options that are available to you would be able to answer. So that's something that a lender can best answer after reviewing all of your required documents and credit. So as a realtor, I can't answer that question for you guys. Sorry, it's a little out of my range, but um, what's more reasonable to ask for a realtor is maybe how is the market um, trending in the area how long are homes staying on the market? Um, what types of trends are you seeing in your market? Um, seller concessions have become a conversation more so than I've known of before. Um, so if you're a seller, be open to seller concessions. It does help the buyer um, just to be able to afford. Um, sometimes their monthly payments make it more reasonable. It is different than a buyer saying, um, I will offer $10,000 more on the deal versus a seller saying, I will offer 10000 It impacts the deal a, a quite a bit differently from what I've heard from lenders to where it's more beneficial to get the seller concessions. So um, as you are interested in um buying a home you may want to consider you know really getting your team together which means um, essentially having a realtor and a lender who are communicating together and saying hey this you know buyer may need more concessions or this buyer may need down payment assistance i'm working on that so the lender can help with the down payment assistance and the programs um, that can assist you with whatever you would need so having a team is great so don't be afraid to um, make sure that you've chosen the right realtor and lender. Um, and you'll also see on my social media videos about um, getting multiple loan estimates. That is something you could do. That's something you could do, um, I would say, within the 30 days of the first one so that you can make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. Um, because when you come back to your realtor, you want to have already chosen who you're going with, preferably. Preferably, you would want to know, you know, this is my lender. These are the terms that I am okay with. And let's find a home in this price range. And as a realtor, I'm saying okay. And I'm looking for those, you know, homes within that price range. So that you already know what your monthly payment is expected to be. And now we just got to find you the home that fits all of that. All right, so um, with buying a home, there's multiple people that you will talk to. And don't be, um, if you've never bought a home, don't be surprised if you ask one person in the process a question and they say talk to someone else. And the reason why is because um, a lot of times we're kind of set to our expertise and we know that there are other professionals in another expertise. And so that we don't cross that line, we would say, talk to them because that's their expertise. So don't find it offensive. Don't find it um, like that person is pushing you off. They're really just trying to protect you and themselves by telling you there's an expert in that field. So please talk to that expert. So just don't take it like they're pushing you away or they don't want to answer your questions. They may not be in that 
um, area of expertise to answer the question. So like for a realtor, if you ask me so many questions about the loan, I'm gonna have to tell you to talk to the lender. Why? Because I'm not a lender. <laughs> so um, the lot, a lot of the things that you'll see me post are public knowledge. Um, a lot of those things like, for example, the USDA single family home loan program that I posted, that's a PDF that's public <laughs> for everyone. So um, some of the people that I've done consultations with, I've shared that with them as well, but that's available to everyone. I don't have like a secret password or anything to get to that. It's available to everyone. And they also have multiple programs, so that's not the only one. So just know that, you know, when you are in the home buying process, you'll talk to different people who are different, um, have different levels of expertise, and they may refer you to one or the other um, just because they know their boundaries. So don't don't be offended by that part. Also, um, also know that if you get information from one party, don't bring it to the other party to ask you to explain it. So for example, if you get a loan estimate from a lender, don't bring it to the realtor and ask the realtor to explain it. Ask the lender that gave it to you to explain it. Because if anyone gives you any information in the home buying process, that person, that business, that company, whomever, should be able to explain what they gave to you. Because that, if there's any agreement about it, that's between you and that person or company, right? So they need to be able to explain that to you instead of you taking that to another party and saying, explain this to me. So that's another thing. Um, if you get information like a loan estimate from your lender, your lender or that mortgage broker, they need to explain that to you. Bringing that to your realtor to explain it to you is not, that's not how that works. Get the person that gave it to you to explain all the terms. And if you feel like they can't explain it, maybe that's not the right lender for you. Okay. I see a question, how much do I need in my bank account to buy? That's relative. Um, as I was saying earlier in the live, um, a lot of things depend on what you're getting. So um, if you are to put something down, there's a percentage that you may need to put down based on the loan that you have. But right now, I don't even know what loan we're discussing, right? So again, the lender would be able to tell you like which option is best for you. And then if you need to put anything down and say that you don't have it, they can also work with you to find down payment assistance. So there are programs that um, where you don't have to put anything down, right? Like FHA, VA, NACA. Um, FHA actually has an option for 100% financing right now. Um, USDA is another one. So it's all relative on what your loan is, what your home is, like how much um, you're able to get um, from your lender. So that's really a relative question. It's not going to fit everyone to answer just that one. And, you know, like I said, if it's something more so financial, the lender is going to be the best person that you would talk to about that. And then, you know, after you've ironed out all of those kinks between the lender, um, you would come back to your realtor and say, this is my pre-approval. This is my price point. And we go home shopping after that. So, yeah, that's that's a hard question to answer without any information, really. So is anyone looking to buy a home this year? We're nearing the end of July. Anybody saying by December, I need to be in a house? Anybody? And also, I'll say this, I am a um, licensed realtor, and if I'm not the realtor in your area, per se, I do refer to other realtors. So, 
for those that I've been on consultation calls with and will say, hey, you know, maybe your credit's not where you would like it to be to have all the options available or maybe I'm just not in your area. Um, maybe there's other avenues that you can try. So credit, um, if you, let's say you're saying, I don't have a particular time frame in mind that I want to buy a home, but I know my credit is not where I would like it to be. Um, there's different ways that you can address that. It depends what you're trying to fix in your credit, of course. So like if you have late payments or you have trouble paying your bills, um, what I have recommended is 211. So you can search 211.org and you can find 